In today's video, we got a pretty special product here, which is the Xbox Series S. So this is the next generation console. So we're gonna unbox it, take a closer look at all the details and play some games. All right, so let's get started. guys so it's been a while since we've had our consoles updated and here at the end of 2020 we are getting next generation so this is definitely quite exciting so we're looking at the all digital series s which is probably the best option for casual players so this is the retail box and i have to say it's smaller than i thought it was going to be you guys can kind of see my hand in the box it's not very large so right away i like the small form factor so on the back we have some pictures and games, some marketing. So a pretty nice box overall. And on one of the sides we can see some of the features. Up to 120 FPS gaming, velocity architecture, and the next generation Xboxes do have solid state drives and this one has 512. But usable is, you know, much lower than that because of the operating system. So that is one thing you have to keep in mind with this S version is that storage could be an issue and being all digital you will depend on storage. But the good part is, is you can't upgrade with external SSD. So we we also get variable refresh rates, HDR capabilities, and no more discs. So depending on how you look at it, it could be good or bad. But I think as we all know it, everything is going digital. All right, so let's go ahead and open this thing up. So not too sure exactly where to start, but looks like we have a seal here on the side with a little pull label. Instead of ripping those off, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the seals. And there's another one in the back, looks like. So they're all over the place. All right, so as we open it, we can see we got a pretty interesting greeting here. And check out how the Series S here is nestled between the brown carton. And this thing is even smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's definitely small. Wow, that's really impressive. I thought the box was small already, but wow, very nicely packed. This thing is really clean looking. Definitely liking the overall feel of it. It looks like this part here is the fan. And what's cool is we got little rubber feet on one end and also the bottom. So you can put it horizontally or vertically. Very cool. And you guys can see where it was sitting here. Very interesting packaging. So on the very bottom, looks like here we have some kind of little note or quick start guide. So let's see what else is included. So obviously we do have a controller. And it definitely looks like an Xbox controller. So pretty nice. It feels a little different, but overall about the same as the old one. So very familiar at least. But the D-pad here definitely looks a bit different. All right, so we got the controller. And we also do get a high-speed HDMI cable. The power cord, and it's just a two-prong, not grounded. And the last part, some kind of documentation of warranty or something. But yeah, that's pretty much all that's in the box so very simple and quite unique packaging for sure so let's get that out of the way so looking at the remote our all feels pretty good and it has a nice grip there's definitely a texture on it but it is all plasticky so not the best feeling but you know about what is expected for this console now the one thing I definitely don't like is that you still have to put batteries in it now the good part is is that it did come with the batteries and they are just double a regular batteries so you could get some rechargeables and charge them because these won't last long so i was hoping that they would have a rechargeable this time around but looks like they don't but there's a lot of third party options you know that you can get so yeah simple as that and now we have a little bit of weight and it feels a little better so yeah it looks like about the typical things except for we do have a share button now right there in the middle so on the console itself we still have our little xbox button here and it probably glows like before we got the pair button a usb port so this is one of the sides or could be the bottom so we got some venting here pretty clean overall and i don't know if you guys will make it out but on this side of the line it says xbox and on the other side it says hello from seattle it's an interesting touch so the two ends look like venting ports. 
And then going to the back, we got our ethernet port, two USB ports, HDMI output, storage expansion port, and this is where you can expand the SSD storage to give you much more room to hold more games. And here at the end, this is where we're gonna plug in our power cord. So if we stand our console up like this, we got a nice little logo here, and then this really stark contrast between the white and black where the fan is. So yeah, very nice design. I love the size, very unique and quite attractive. And you guys can see how large the remote is compared to the console itself. So for the next part, let's go ahead and compare it to the older Xbox One S. So from the console point of view, you can see here that the Series S is definitely a bit smaller. Now, if we go out this way, you can really see that there's a quite a large difference. Now looking at the back, so thickness does appear to be about the same maybe. And if I set it down like this on the ports, here you can really see how much smaller the Series S is. So now let's take a look at the controllers. So the One S is on the bottom and the new Series S is on the top. So as far as the form factor, they look very similar. And it does appear that the new Series S is using a USB-C port here and the old one having the micro USB. Pair buttons, same location. So yeah, very identical. Just really small different touches. And the bottoms look practically also the same. So yeah, as far as the controllers go, it didn't really change too much. Now how it's gonna feel might be a little different, but I don't expect it to be much more different than it was. All right, so for the next part, I think we should go ahead and connect it. I got this TV here in the background, you guys can see. And that's a Vizio V-Series 40 inch. So it's pretty small, but it is 4K. Now this Xbox here doesn't output 4K unless it's upscaling to that, but it does have a native of 1440. So we'll see how this TV does with that. So we're gonna use the provided HDMI cable. And if you're hooking up your new Xbox, make sure you do use this cable because not all HDMI cables are the same. And if you notice on this one, it says high speed. So that's quite important to get the most out of the Xbox. So yeah, we're just simply plugging that in into the HDMI output. And now our power cord will plug over here. All right, so I got the Xbox plugged into the TV. Let's go ahead and hit the button here on the top. And there it goes, power's on. And it boots up. So that looks like the new boot up menu or logo, should I say? So I think we can go ahead and maybe try to pair the remote also. So I'm gonna hit the middle here and it starts glowing. Okay, and it paired. So I guess they were already paired before. So that's nice. So here's telling us that we can go to an app and set it up like that. Now, if we didn't wanna do this, what can we do? Okay, so we can go ahead and set up without that. So if you wanted to use the app, that might be easier through your phone. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it here straight on the screen with the remote. So we're gonna choose our language. So the next part, we're gonna to connect to our internet, put in our password, it's connecting. Okay, it looks like we're connected. Okay, now it's asking us where we live and now the updates. So, you know, with these new consoles, you're always gonna have updates and that's one thing that you have to get used to it. So on the bottom there, we can see that we got step one of three and it's almost a gig of downloading to do but it is going pretty quick, so that's good. And on the very right there, you can see that we have 1% done. And by the way, I just wanna mention that the console itself is not making any noise at all, it's silent. I can feel a little bit of breeze coming out right here, but it's ever so slightly. So yeah, practically silent at the moment. So it's finished with the update much faster than I thought. It's only been five minutes or so, which is kinda interesting. So it's asking us to push this button on the remote. And now the A, Okay, so I guess it wants to update the controller. Apparently the controller gets an update too. Well, that's quite interesting. I don't remember that being on the Xbox One consoles. And the remote's flashing, I guess, updating. All right, so we got 100% and it's done. Okay, so here's where we're gonna sign in with our Microsoft account. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Well, I guess this is the Game Pass. Definitely interested in this, especially here we have one month for $1 and then it's $14.99 a month. And looks like we also get EA Play and Gold, the 100 games. Also can play on PC and Android. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty decent deal. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and sign up for that. So you can choose to do this if you want. But I think, you know, with this console, it's probably a good idea especially being digital version. All right, so it looks like we'd finished with that. Now we need to choose our time zone. I'm gonna go automatic. So here it's asking if you're not using it, what do you want? I think I would prefer the energy savings. Keep all the games and apps up to date. I think that would probably be a good idea. So it says here, it looks like your display supports advanced features. So we're gonna enable them, I guess. So here it's asking us how does it look to 4K. All right, it looks like we're done. It says, let's go.
So take me home. And here we are, guys. We are home. So I did sign up for the Xbox Game Pass, which is a great deal, especially a dollar for the first month. And yeah, it looks like the menu is pretty intuitive here just looking at it. And definitely feels a lot more snappy, for sure. Like everything just changes quite immediately. There's no lag whatsoever. So that's great to see there. All right, so we do play a lot of Forza Horizon 4, so maybe we should try that out. Let's see. So when we go to it, you guys can see we have the install option. And the reason for that is because we have the Game Pass. So we can install any of the games that are available in Game Pass. So let's go ahead and install this Forza Horizon 4. And I think this would be a pretty good test here for this Xbox to see how smooth it is. So let's choose what to install. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. Okay, so there's an expansion pack. Okay, yeah, we definitely want to install all. So it's going to probably take a while because it's 84.6 GB. And the internal, you guys can see there on the right side on the bottom, it says 362 GB free. So this is what you can expect out of this Series S is not very much storage. I mean, this is going to get you, you know, depending on the games, you know, up to eight or 10 games. But, you know, if you're going to install bigger games, it's not going to be very many of them. So just keep that in mind. So you'll have to get either an external or the official SSD expansion or you know you can just delete and then reinstall as you want all right so let's go ahead and see how long it's gonna take to download this so for now it's installing the store looks like and now the game itself so if you guys look right there in the middle you can see it says ready to start right at the middle so once it gets to that point we can go ahead and start the Forza and it should be working well I'm just gonna let it install and uh, yeah maybe let's see what else we can do here in the settings maybe so we got our network settings, TV and display options. So you can kind of adjust everything here. So this is the HDR settings. So I guess I'll adjust this. Okay, so here we have a little preview of what the calibrated one looks like and the uncalibrated. So yeah, it does look a bit better. Now this TV, even though it has HDR, it's not very good at it. I think what we got there is just fine. So while the game is downloaded, let's go ahead and check out what the Xbox Game Pass has. I'll click here on show all so these are all of the games so you can see here that the EA games are also included here in one list well that's cool I see a lot of games that I'm definitely interested in so that's a good sign so yeah just by looking here seems like you got pretty good options to play we do have dirt 4 here also some Final Fantasy stuff Forza 7 that's cool definitely have to try that out haven't played that one yet so yeah just a bunch of very diverse games here even minecraft is in here oh well, here's one that i might try out it's the need for speed heat that looks like it could be fun oh i'm pretty impressed overall and the great thing about having the game pass is that when they come out with new games some of them will end up here also what is this usher near that oh, we got a little video we can watch hmm, the kids might like this one well that's pretty cool so here we can see just the EA games. One game that really interests me is the Jedi Fallen Order, looks like. So that might be a pretty interesting game to try. So yeah, these are all the EA games. Not sure how good EA games are, but they do have quite a few available here. Even The Sims, if you want to play that. Oh, the Unravel game is here too. And there's a second one. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, plenty of games to choose from for adults and kids. All right, so the game finally downloaded and I went ahead and let it completely download. So let's go ahead and start it up. So this is gonna be a test of how fast this thing boots up because usually this game loads quite slow. So we can see there we went into HDR mode. So far it's looking pretty good. All right, so here's the main menu. Now, usually the part that takes forever is once you start the game here and it starts loading, and this usually takes a while. So let's see how long this will take. Okay, it's already doing something. Wow, that's impressive. That was very quick. Okay, well, I am definitely surprised. All right, so it looks like it downloaded everything they already have on the account. So what was the last thing we were doing? I don't even know. Okay, we we're trying to drift. So I'm probably not going to do very well with this thing, but yeah. So right off the bat, I'm noticing I got much more detail. But we are coming from a 1S, so 
So yeah, it seems like all the movements are a lot smoother. So what you're seeing right now, what I'm recording, is actually in 30p. So you're not really going to see it all like I see it. So whatever you see, imagine it twice as smooth. <laughs> oh yeah, I can definitely tell that it's much better. Not only in the details, but also just the motion. The motion is just a lot more smoother and more buttery. This car is very drifty. I guess once you figure out how to use it, you can really have fun drifting in corners. Anyways. So yeah, right off the bat, very nice. You can even, guys, look at the detail of the car. It just looks so much better. Now, I don't know how this would look like on a 1X, but coming from a 1S, this is a pretty significant difference here. All right, so the next thing I want to try is actually download another game. So I'm going to try to find something a little bit more light to download. Okay, so this is only 8 gigs, so let's go ahead and install this game. And what I want to do is I want to try the feature where you can jump between the two games without it having to reload. So once it gets to the ready, we'll start it up. Alright, so it didn't take too long and we've downloaded enough to start it, I think. Okay. Seems like a pretty cool game. It says press any button. So it seems to be taking a little bit to load. All right, so we're definitely now over a minute. Not sure if it's hung up or what. Let's jump to Forza, see what happens. All right, so strangely enough, the Forza game is completely starting over. That doesn't make any sense. So let's see if we can jump to this game. Okay, so it went back to the loading. All right guys, so I'm in Forza again and I went ahead and let the Descenders game completely download. And so it did start working. So let's go ahead and see if we can jump to it quickly. So now the only difference is, is that Forza is in HDR, but this game is not. So I'm not sure if that was a quick start or not. Let's see if we can jump back to Forza. So either Forza is not compatible or what, but I'm not getting the quick start to work. But I do see it show up whenever I switch to this game. So it's a little bit weird. But if I jump from here back here, it does say quick resume. But it doesn't let me continue where I was. It just kind of resets me at the board. So I guess it's going to all depend on the kind of game you're playing. So I'm thinking some of the titles will work better than others with this quick resume thing. Or at least what I'm seeing right now. In any case, it does seem to work. All right, and so this is the Xbox Series S. So overall, I think it's a great console. And having that Game Pass is definitely a good combination with this. So because it is all digital, storage is definitely an issue. So having an external SSD is probably something you'd want to consider. Also, if you want 4K gaming, obviously this ain't going to work because it only upscales to 4K. It's not native. But if you do have a 1440p monitor, this would pair very well with that. So overall, I think it's quite impressive for what it is and how small it is and even with the games on you cannot hear the fan or any sound coming out of it all right guys well hopefully you enjoyed my take of it if you did then hit that like button if you want to pick up the console for yourself it's going to be a little bit hard to find it but hopefully it'll be more available shortly so i'm going to leave some links in the description check it out also i'll be making a few more videos of this console and actually the series x so if you're interested in that then stay tuned thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace